Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar, Modern Assessment of Attention with TACO, the Attention and Concentration Test. My name is David Brieber, and I'm a consultant here at Shufrid, and I'm pleased to guide you through this webinar today. If you have any questions during the webinar, you have the opportunity to ask them with the GoToWebinar tool. I will be happy to answer them at the end of the webinar. Before we take a look, uh, at uh, the test tackle, I would like to take a step back and talk about concentration and tension uh, in general. So uh, to be able to concentrate means to be able to pursue an activity with sufficient persistence and with a high degree of precision while ignoring other things which are irrelevant to, to the task. So as you can see, this is a very general definition of concentration, uh, but this is no coincidence because the ability to concentrate is a kind of a basic requirement for all more demanding or higher mental abilities. Think, for example, of numerical ability or text comprehension. In principle, these are often requirements that I, as an employer, uh, might have for my applicants. However, both skills are of little use if the person cannot concentrate on texts or numbers sufficiently well. So, in other words, um, concentration is, an essential, is essential for any activity in which information has to be consciously perceived and mentally processed. Uh, one needs the ability to concentrate not only for uh, higher intellectual activities, but also for practical manual activities. If you want to operate tools safely, uh, I must not uh, be distracted by every little thing, but must be able to focus on uh, the at least the current work step and, and don't be distracted by anything else. So therefore it is not surprising that the ability to concentrate is also a very good predictor for uh, safe behavior uh, in the workplace. For this reason it is especially important for employers in the safety related industries to hire people with good concentration and then uh, continue to ensure that these employees maintain an adequate concentration level during their employment. Um, when we talk about text comprehension, numerical ability, practical activities, we see that assessment of concentration is important, especially for uh, the HR uh, sector. Uh, by HR, I mean both the testing of employees and managers, but also career counseling or the selection of workers in safety relevant professions, such as pilots or train drivers. But it could also be a uh, test for university entrants. So now these are all very much different areas, but basically they have the same the same questions, how suitable is an applicant for a job or a study program? So in other words, we're always talking about aptitude tests. Um, aptitude tests have been around for a long time, but uh, modern aptitude tests face different challenges than perhaps they did a few years ago. On the one hand, we live in a globalized world where it is no longer a matter of course that applicants live locally uh, and can quickly drop by for a test session. On the other hand, um, this uh, um, greater reach of applicants can also lead to a high number of applicants in some cases, if you think about apprenticeship or university entrance tests. And in addition, we have target groups um, whose usage behavior has changed. So target groups are more likely to use a smartphone or a tablet rather than a laptop. So uh, maybe let's have a look at this graph here. Uh, here we see that the use of desktop PCs and smartphones has changed over the recent years. So it's from 2000. Uh, 16 to 2022. And the use of desktop 
PCs here, the blue line um, has decreased over time, while the use of smartphones here, the green line, has uh, in instead uh, increased. Currently, uh, more people uh, own and use smartphones than a laptop or PC. So these new challenges um, um, have also, of course, an effect on the requirements of aptitude tests. The requirements are different today than they used to be. So aptitude tests should not only identify suitable applicants, um, but um, they should uh, also be able to be used uh, all over the world and reach applicants worldwide. And ideally, they uh, should also, uh, the applicants sh uh, should be able to do this on a device that they are most familiar with, which today is, are clearly smartphones. These new requirements are were the, the basis for the development of the test TACO. Due to its modern implementation, TACO offers exactly those possibilities that are needed due to these new challenges. TACO was developed according to so-called mobile first principle. Uh, that means that it can be used with touch screens and it is optimized for mobile devices with regard to the test design and the presentation of, of the test items. Of course, TAC also works on a conventional uh, laptop or PC. As soon as the test is opened in the web browser, the test automatically adapts to the, to the format of the device. This uh, flexibility in test administration makes it easier to reach younger target groups in particular. Accordingly, the norm sample um, uh, used for test interpretation is also relatively broad in terms of the age range. Um, this modern implementation can therefore generally increase the acceptance of testing and in the end also has a positive effect on the image of the employer. So let's have a look at uh, TACO in, in specific. Um, TACO uh, also allows uh, largely language-free testing and therefore has a high degree of internationalization. Um, here you can see an example, a task. So there is a matrix with nine symbols and above the uh, matrix, the criteria for the target stimulus. So first, the person must uh, always look uh, what are the criteria for the target stimulus. Afterwards, the person should mark all, um, all uh, symbols uh, that uh, um, fulfill this criteria exactly. So in our case, um, I would have to look for triangles with two dots. So therefore, I would mark the upper left symbol, the one uh, in the middle, and the one at the lower uh, lower left. So upper right, middle, and lower left. Um, and I should do this as fast as possible because uh, you have only six seconds per task to mark all correct symbols. So depending on how many criteria such a target stimulus has and how many and where the target stimuli are within uh, the matrix uh, and especially how much the target stimuli differ from all the other stimuli, uh, the task becomes easier or more difficult. And after the six seconds had elapsed, uh, the test automatically jumps to the next task. Um, the instructions in TACO are mainly given non-verbally by using sample items. So there are there is also uh, uh, there are also only few language requirements, uh, which also simplifies internationalization. As with most other tests in the Vena test system, um, there is also a practice phase with practice items. This is used to check whether the person has basically understood the task. 
The few verbal instructions are of course available in several languages and if a language that is important to you is not available, the test can be translated very easily without much effort or cost. The test phase itself uh, then runs completely language free. Since each task is time limited and the number of tasks is also fixed, there is also a fixed uh, total test duration, which allows you to plan the test session uh, well. Uh, as uh, for the total test duration of TACO, uh, there are basically um, currently uh, two um, uh, different test forms basically. So there, is, there are two standard forms and then there are two long forms. The st standard forms have um, 50 tasks and take about eight minutes. Um, the long forms on the other hand have about have 290 tasks and take about 32 minutes. So with the long forms it is the is possible to measure sustained attention. So the ability to concentrate on the task for a longer period of time. Standard forms and um, long forms um, are uh, differ only in the number of tasks. So uh, the type of the task is exactly the same for each of these forms. There is also a parallel form. So we have two standard forms and two long forms. And this means the parallel form means that uh, the test form measure exactly the same. They have the same psychometric properties, but they do not have exactly the same test material. So these parallel forms um, are very well suited for follow-up testing or periodic testing for employees. The interpretation of the results is relatively simple, intuitive. Um, here you can see all the variables that you receive in the scoring window. So there is only one main uh, test variable uh, depending on a test form. This is uh, ability to concentrate or sustained attention. Uh, then there are two additional um, variables. Uh, on the one hand, uh, the number of missed reactions. This is the number of target stimuli that were not marked during the six seconds per task. And on the other hand, you also get the number of false alarms. This is the number of symbols that were incorrectly marked, even though there are not target stimuli. The main test variable is the number of um, correctly solved symbols. This means it's the sum of both correctly marked and correctly unmarked uh, symbols. Um, now that you have seen the type of test items and the evaluation, um, uh, some of you may be wondering whether the device on which I'm taking the test also has an influence on the test results. We actually looked at these questions and, and scientifically investigated this question by having one group perform TACO on a smartphone and another group performing TACO on a desktop PC. Afterwards, we compared the two uh, groups and you can see in the table the results um, uh, from, uh, of uh, all test variables here. And um, for uh, the main test variable for both groups, you see at first glance that if you look at the mean values that there is virtually no difference between the two groups in the uh, um, mean performance. And this uh, means uh, this is also um, confirmed by statistical analysis. So there is no significant difference in test performance between people who are working on TACO on a smartphone or on a desktop PC. For you, this information means that you can leave it up to the applicant to decide which device they want to use for the test. So let's summarize. Um, TACO combines an attractive presentation and mobile testing with scientific standards. Of course, it meets all uh, psychometric quality criteria as all VTS tests. It has a time limit per task, which makes the test duration well controllable. It is therefore comparable to other attention concentration tests in the Wiener test system. 
Where it differs, however, is that TACO can also be administered uh, in, in the web browser via test link and thus is independent of the location the test person is taking the test. Uh, the short uh, and animation-based instructions make it possible to use the test internationally in different languages. Um, because the test is optimized for use on smartphones and has a modern test design, it, is, uh, it appeals more to the younger uh, target group. And due to these characteristics, um, TACO is particularly suitable also, especially for uh, screening applicants. Um, TACO, by the way, is not the only test in the test system that was developed according to these principles. And for example, the inventory for testing cognitive abilities is another uh, such a test that can be used to measure logical reasoning, verbal, numerical, and spatial abilities. And TACO and DINT uh, are a very good team, therefore, which uh, we also offer as a test set uh, that's called Safety Screening, Safe SC, and is especially good as a screening tool for the safety area. So if you're interested in this, you will find a webinar and further information on our homepage or in our marketplace. So that brings us to the end of our webinar. Thank you for your participation and your interest and hope to see you next time.